Hello and welcome back to Clarkonomics. In this video we're going to wrap up our discussion of mixed economies by talking about the big economic questions and the economic goals. So first things first, one more reminder, there is no such thing as a command economy, centrally planned economy, there's no such thing as a free market, market economy. In the world every economy is technically a mixed economy. The question is which way do they lean? More towards the command side, more towards the market side, who knows? So our discussion here is going to assume maybe a little bit of a balanced mixed economy. So answering the big three questions, let's get right into it. What gets produced? How do they figure out what to make in a mixed economy? Well, it is largely based on consumer demand, similar to a market economy. It's all about what people want. That's what firms are going to make. But unlike a market economy, there are some limits on this, right? Certain stuff is illegal, right? The government says, yeah, people might be willing to pay for it, but no. So there's that. And also, as we mentioned in a previous video, there's such a thing as a market failure, where a company, if they can't make money off something, they're just not going to produce it. But what if it's something good for the people, such as military protection, or such as roadways? The government will step in and create that thing, even if firms don't want to. Or they could subsidize firms and give them an incentive to produce that thing. Looking at how, how does stuff get produced? Well, it's a lot like a market economy. There's firms, the firms are competing and trying to outdo each other and be more efficient than each other. But the problem with a market economy is sometimes that efficiency can look pretty ugly. It's very cutthroat, social Darwinist, survival of the fittest and everybody else, tough luck. In a mixed economy, the government is there to do a couple things, right? To protect common resources is one. In a previous video, we learned about the tragedy of the commons, right? So if there's a forest of trees, whichever companies get to it first, they're going to want to cut down as many trees as they can before anybody else gets there. And if every firm thinks like that, there won't be any trees left and that common resource is depleted. But if there's a government, they can look at that and they can do, you know, the things that we talked about. They can say, all right, you, this is your land. And if one firm owns some land, they have an incentive to make sure that they can, you know, keep the trees, keep producing trees, right? They want to make it sustainable. So the government will protect common resources by establishing property rights or sometimes using, you know, taxes. But then also, sometimes the government enforces excludability, right? With patents and copyrights. So that's something that is maybe not so efficient for one company to have only the rights to something, but the government needs to make sure that companies can make money Otherwise, companies aren't going to do anything beneficial. They're not going to design new drugs uh, to cure diseases. They're not going to create new art if someone's just going to rip it off. So the government creates those club goods, what we sometimes call artificially scarce goods, um, because they're beneficial for all of us. And then this will be a much later topic of discussion, but sometimes the government gets involved in prices of goods. So in a market economy, it's all about what the market determines, right? Buyers and sellers in that tug of war. But in a mixed economy, the government does sometimes try to get in there and alter the price of something. A great example of that would be the minimum wage. The minimum wage is set by the government. If um, producers could pay less than that, they, sorry, if firms could pay less than that for labor, they would. But it's illegal to pay somebody less than a certain amount of money. So the minimum wage, which that little picture there is um, from people who want make, to make $15 an hour the minimum wage, that is an example of the government getting involved in the production process. And for whom? Right? Mostly like in a market economy, it's still whoever's willing and able to buy. But you can probably think of some examples where somebody isn't able to buy, right, if they are in poverty. And the government will come along and assist them. So this picture is the uh, SNAP program, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, sometimes referred to commonly as food stamps. So if somebody demonstrates to the government that they uh, don't make enough money to be able to afford groceries, then the government will step in using taxpayer dollars and make sure that those people get what they need to survive. So, you know, it's part who's willing and able, but if you need it, the government might be able to provide it to you, which would not be the case in a market economy, a pure market economy. So that's how mixed economies, relatively balanced ones anyway, answer the big three questions. Getting to the goals. So, what you're going to find is because we're in between command and market, all of these goals are going to be like kind of in between. So let's just take a look. Efficiency. Are mixed economies efficient? Well, yeah. They're more efficient than command economies because there's some competition, um, there's some entrepreneurship, 
but they're not going to be as efficient as market economies because a minimum wage is inefficient. That's not to say that it's bad, but it might be inefficient. To, you know, it's more efficient for companies to pay people like next to nothing, but the government in a mixed economy might not let them. Growth. Well, mixed economies are going to see some growth more than a command economy because there's innovation, there's entrepreneurship, there's competition, but maybe less growth than a market economy where you know, firms can produce whatever they want and do things however they want, right? Those, those limits that the government places are what kind of bring us back from being able maybe to achieve more growth or more efficiency. Freedom. Well, this one's splitting the difference here, right? In a mixed economy, you have more freedom than in a command economy, but obviously less than in a market. No further explanation required. Equity, meaning fairness, totally depends, um, you know, but in a mixed economy, people are going to always debate how equitable things are. Like, is the government doing too much? Is the government doing too little? Should we have billionaires? Should we have people starving to death, right? This is the kind of stuff, these debates about fairness that get talked about in a mixed economy. Our political parties are partly based around this question, how much should the government do in our lives? That's an example of something that people debate in terms of economic systems. Security. Well, um, there's less security than in a command economy, right? In a command economy, the government provided things for the people, even if they couldn't, like, quote-unquote, afford to pay them. Um, but there's more security than in a market economy. In a market economy, if you weren't productive, then you don't get stuff. You don't get paid. But in a mixed economy, where the government does provide a little bit of a safety net, uh, well, you're going to have more security. You're not just out on your own. The government might have your back. And then finally, stability. Um... Mixed economies are more stable than command economies. Because remember, with a command economy, the government's suppressing the people um, and making really inefficient decisions. And that might work for a little bit, but it can't go on forever. But it's also, a mixed economy, more stable than a market economy. Because a market economy goes wherever firms and consumers take it. Everyone's just doing what's best for themselves. And that's not necessarily going to lead to a very good place. So at least with a mixed economy, you have a government that can see the big picture and is interested in kind of, you know, putting bumpers on if we're talking about like a bowling alley, right? To keep the ball out of the gutter, to make sure that the economy is not veering too sharply in one direction or the other direction. They want to keep things on track. And so eventually when we talk about fiscal policy and monetary policy, we'll see some ways that the government tries to keep the economy on track. So thank you for watching. 